Hi everybody, I like you watching this video, you are with me. So uh, this video will be about uh, the aircraft primary controls, uh, the previous one and uh, uh, the first one video uh, from this uh, PPL uh, video course was about uh, the construction of the fuselage. So next will be about uh, the, let me remember, about construction of the uh, undercarriage, yeah, landing gears. But okay, let's uh, move on with the, our, this current topic. Uh, we will discuss uh, the construction uh, of uh, uh, primary controls of the air, aircraft. Uh, so this is the list of the uh, things that we are going to discuss today. Uh, we will talk first about how we uh, transfer our control inputs from the cockpit to the uh, uh, mechanisms, to the uh, control surfaces, aerodynamic surfaces like ailerons, flaps, rudder, elevator and uh, trimmers. Okay, so let's start with the the, uh, the idea how we uh, transfer our control inputs. So movement of the yoke, this is uh, our steering column, this is the main control uh, which allows us to uh, control the position of the aircraft in the air. Uh, also pedals and we have a trim knob in the cockpit and we have uh, switches like a flap lever, flap switches. So we need to uh, transfer all these uh, inputs uh, to the, our aerodynamic surfaces which are control airplane in the air. So we have some uh, set of the ways to do it. So the first one and easiest one is the mechanical system of linking uh, ins and outs so this is the uh, most uh, easiest system uh, which uh, contains uh, some kind of cables, rods, levers and chains and something like that, pulleys, so everything is mechanical uh, and uh, also we can have a hydraulic way of transferring inputs. Uh, so in hydraulic system we use a kind of liquid or oil which is under pressure and next uh, way is uh, electrical way so we use uh, just uh, electrical power and motor actuators electrical motor actuators and also we could use uh, pneumatic uh, system uh, which is used uh, pressurized gas kind of air so but uh, this is just uh, the this is just additional. We actually, for main controls, we don't use a pneumatic system, so we don't. We are not, we are not going to discuss it uh, further. Uh, just uh, uh, the reason is why because the pressurized gas is uh, compressible, so we cannot transfer, we cannot position the control surfaces uh, precisely uh, because air is compressible. For example, aileron will always change uh, their position depends on the uh, aerodynamic forces on them. So let's go with mechanical way of uh, connecting inputs and outputs. So mechanical is just, uh, as I said, the system of uh, cables and rods, levers, chains. So it's a very simple system because nothing complicated in this, in it. Uh, so that's why it's reliable and low cost maintenance. So that means that uh, uh, it's uh, actually good for light aircrafts. But there are some uh, minuses besides of these pluses. And uh, all those minuses are actually related to the size of the aircraft where we use these uh, controls of this mechanical system. So the bigger aircraft we have, the longer lines uh, we have to put into the aircraft and uh, so that means that uh, we more uh, error of uh, deformation, deformation errors we will have in these lines. So and uh, with the growing of the size of aircraft we will have uh, more errors, uh, position errors. So that means that uh, controlling air airplane will become uh, kind of flabby. And also the uh, mechanical way of connecting control surfaces or aerodynamic surfaces limited by the maximum human force could be applied to controls for example to yoke so the bigger aircraft is the bigger uh, surfaces of the 
uh, ailerons of the uh, flaps or rudders we have so we uh, limited by the power which pilot or force which pilot could apply to a stick or yoke so that means that uh, we are limited by the size of the aircraft and also uh, we are limited by the movement range of the controls again uh, the bigger uh, control surfaces are and uh, so the bigger movement of range of them will be that means that uh, we need a uh, bigger movement range of the control inputs too in the cabin for example let's say uh, Cessna 152 is uh, just movement range of the yoke is uh, let's say about uh, 40 or 45 centimeters uh, from the uh, maximum front position to the maximum aft position so uh, if we make this range bigger it will be quite uh, complicated to control the airplane it will be inconvenient and also it will uh, take a lot of place in the cabin one more minus is that uh, the mechanical system takes uh, some space in the fuselage so we have to uh, have some uh, special places to put roads cables uh, and of course it's uh, not, not convenient because uh, we could use this space for other things okay so now let's go to the hydraulic system uh, this uh, system is uh, better for bigger aircrafts because uh, it can pass uh, high forces to uh, mechanisms uh, because uh, we are not limited by the forces applied to control surfaces I mean control uh, inputs so we just uh, this is depends just only on uh, the pressure of the uh, oil that pump develops so we can uh, create any desired range of movement it's just uh, the question of the design of uh, actuators this stuff which we use uh, to move for uh, mechanisms or control surfaces also uh, we uh, in this case we would use uh, precise and fast positioning of the control surfaces because uh, this system is uh, would change the position very fast and very precise because uh, the liquid is uh, uncompressible but um, this system of course uh, is uh, expensive in production and maintenance uh, because uh, it's uh, really complicated we have have to have uh, power pumps some valves reservoirs accumulators and power lines and uh, the oil hydraulic uh, liquid that's why it's uh, complicated it uh, the subject to leaks so it has to go through maintenance and also it's heavy because of the a uh, lot of components and the aircraft there is also one more minus uh, in hydraulic system so if you don't have any special artificial feedback system uh, you won't uh, feel uh, anything on your controls uh, when you uh, do something with them when you control airplane uh, so that means that you have to uh, implement special feedback force force system which will uh, let you know what's going on uh, when you control an airplane what forces you apply on the uh, control surfaces or to ailerons or elevator for example so now uh, let's uh, say a couple of words about electrical system electrical system is uh, easiest uh, much easier in uh, construction uh, than hydraulic system because uh, we just uh, need to put wires uh, use just electricity and uh, place some electric actuators uh, in the fuselage so it's uh, mechanically it's easier and uh, one more plus is that electrical system has low energy dissipation also it lightweight but uh, there is one minus which uh, actually limits uh, the usage of the electrical actuators in the airplane because those uh, electrical actuators they are slow in changing position in motion or they can apply small power uh, I mean small force uh, that means that we cannot use uh, those uh, actuators uh, where we need to change uh, uh, position of the uh, aerodynamic surfaces quickly and precisely 
Uh, so that's why uh, those actuators can be used now only on, uh, for example, on flaps. When we don't need uh, to change position of the flaps rapidly. So, for example, uh, on Cessna 152, position of the flaps, changing the position of the flaps for one step just takes about 5 or 7 seconds. It's normal, it's okay. Uh, but you cannot use uh, these uh, electrical actuators on uh, uh, managing position of the, uh, for example, elevator. Okay, uh, so let's uh, go to directly now to control surfaces. To control lateral position or bank of the aircraft, uh, we use ailerons, uh, which are placed on the trailing edge of the wings. And those ailerons are mechanically connected uh, with the yoke. So when we move the yoke uh, le to the left or to the right, ailerons will move uh, up and down, oppositely. How does this work? Okay, let's see. So when we turn yoke to the right side, uh, we will get uh, the right bank, because the aileron on the left wing will go down and we will have more lift on the left wing. And simultaneously, uh, the right aileron will go up and that means that me, we will have uh, less uh, lift on the right wing. So the lift will be unbalanced on the aircraft and uh, aircraft will have tendency to bank to the right side. The same but the opposite, if we turn uh, yoke to the left side, uh, we will have uh, aileron on the right wing going down, so we will have more lift and uh, the left aileron on the left wing will go up, we will have uh, less lift. So in this case we will have bank to the left. So how it is uh, change uh, the position of the aircraft? Just uh, uh, you know it will be discussed uh, more deeply in details in uh, the principles of flight of the uh, our PPL theory of our training course. But just uh, if we talk about it shortly, so when we bank aircraft, the lift will be tilted. The direction of the lift will be tilted to the side. This uh, component of the lift will turn our airplane uh, to the side of the bank. So if we bank the airplane to the left side, airplane will go. Uh, slowly will start turning uh, to the left. Okay, so now uh, next is uh, next are flaps. The flaps are high lift devices on the airplane. It's a uh, part of the wings. Uh, flaps are mechanically connected to the wing, to the trailing, trailing edge of the wing, and flaps can move for up or down. We're not going to discuss in details about the uh, how flaps aerodynamically works, we will talk about it in mechanical point of view, okay? Uh, but, so, just need to know that flaps are need to uh, increase lift uh, and also they increase drag when extracted and uh, at the same time uh, they decrease stall speed, okay? Uh, so let's see how flap, uh, how we control the position of the flap. Uh, we can uh, control them by electric uh, way of managing the position, or mechanical way, or hydraulic. So, uh, let's say on uh, Cessna 152 again, our favorite airplane, uh, we use, uh, we have uh, electric uh, system, electric actuators, so we have just switch on the dashboard of the airplane, which we can move up and down and set uh, the desired position of the um, flaps. So, and the electric actuators uh, will uh, position the, these flaps uh, on our desired uh, angle. On some aeroplanes, uh, we can have a mechanical uh, way of uh, uh, managing flaps, positioning the flaps. So, for example, let's say, let's take uh, Piper PA28. Uh, there is uh, just mechanical link, just lever in the cabin. Um, Looks like uh, looks similar to the handbrake of in the automobile in the car. And on uh, complicated airplanes, in uh, big airplanes, heavy, we could have a hydraulic system uh, with uh, hydraulic actuators. So now let's go to the directional control. To control airplane directionally, we use a vertical aerodynamic surface. It's a rudder. 
uh, rudder is placed on the tail of the airplane and uh, could deflect uh, to the right or to the left position. This rudder is connected uh, mechanically by uh, cables and pulleys uh, to the pedals. So, and of, if we push any pedal, uh, this rudder will deflect to uh, uh, the same direction. So, what uh, do we uh, need this rudder for? First of all, to maintain of uh, directional control. So, when we push the rudder, the uh, aircraft will uh, have uh, aerodynamic forces from the left side or the, 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 from the right side, and aircraft will turn uh, down the vertical X of the aircraft to the left or to the right. So we use a rudder in case if we need to correct for crosswind, uh, for example on takeoffs and landings uh, and on flight too. Uh, we need a rudder to correct uh, the position of the aircraft in case of uh, yawing for any reason. Uh, for example, uh, for in case of uh, the, as we said, later uh, in, uh, in case of asymmetrical propeller torque on powerful engine aircraft or in case of uh, when uh, we have asymmetrical engine power set on multi-engine aircraft and also rudder is used uh, to recover from spin and again uh, in uh, details we'll uh, discuss uh, the rudder, the control surfaces uh, in the principles of flight part of the theory course uh, we will discuss it from the aerodynamical point of view. So as we said, when we push a left pedal, rudder will deflect left. And in opposite, when we push the right pedal, rudder will deflect right. Now oh, it's easy. Okay, uh, now uh, elevator control. Our elevator control system uh, allows us uh, to control the attitude of the aeroplane. So the position uh, of the aeroplane in the air, uh, let's say nose up position or nose down position. Using this uh, control, we uh, can put aeroplane into climbing or into descending uh, by moving yoke uh, forward or backward. So and uh, if we move uh, yoke, uh, for example, forward, our elevator will uh, go down, deflect down. So that means that on the tail we will have more lift and uh, tail of course will go up, nose will go down and uh, so that means that we will set the airplane into a nose down position. And an opposite, when we move yoke aft, uh, elevator will deflect up. Uh, so that means that uh, airplane will go to the nose up position and will and be on the position to climb. Again, uh, to control uh, this elevator, we use a system of cables. It is connected to the yoke. So the next uh, part of the controlling of airplane is a, is a trimmer. Next uh, mechanical uh, stuff uh, we use to control airplane. So it's not uh, actually primary control surface, but let's say it's a secondary control surface, which we need to eliminate uh, forces on the elevator, rudder, and finally eliminate control forces on the yoke to zero. Let's see how it works. So we have uh, first uh, trimmer controls in uh, the cockpit, in the cabin. Uh, it's depend on the uh, type of the trimmers. For example, for mechanical trimmers we have uh, some kind of uh, mechan mechanical knobs which we can turn up and down or left to the right. And also we can have uh, electric powered trimmers. So in that case we have just buttons on the yoke or on the dashboard or some kind of switch on the dashboard or we could have a fixed tap trimmer that means that uh, it's uh, this trimmer is just manually preset uh, while the maintenance of the aircraft okay let's see how trimmer works uh, on our Cessna it's, uh, uh, this trimmer is mechanical it's controlled by again by uh, cables so this elevator, elevator trimmer is uh, placed on the trailing edge of the elevator. So what uh, do we need this trimmer for? Uh, we need this trimmer to reduce forces on, on control yoke uh, to set this uh, 
uh, forces uh, to zero to compensate uh, first changing of center of gravity. For example, if we uh, load aircraft, our center of gravity will go a little bit uh, to the aft position. That means that the aircraft will be unbalanced. Uh, that means that uh, we use trimmer to balance it, to uh, remove uh, control forces uh, needed, to, uh, needed to keep the airplane in the horizontal position in flight. And also, we use trimmer, elevator trimmer, I mean, uh, to set the desired pitch on climbing and descending in two words, uh, when we uh, set the airplane to the climbing position, uh, if we do not retrim the airplane, we would have, in this case, uh, to constantly pull the yoke and keep this uh, yoke in, the, uh, in this position, or keep with this airplane in the desired position, applying the con constantly the force on the yoke. But if we retrim the airplane, we could remove hands from the out of the yokes and the airplane will uh, be stable in the climbing position, will remain stable in the climbing position without any uh, control forces on the yoke. The same for descending, for example. Uh, also, uh, we use elevator trimmer when we uh, want to have desired pitch position after changing uh, or power set of engine or changing the uh, configuration of the airplane. For example, if we extract flaps or uh, uh, landing gear, gears, so the, we will have a different uh, uh, aerodynamic forces on the airplane, and uh, airplane will be will be unbalanced, unbalanced, and we need to use trimmer to balance it again, to return the airplane uh, to uh, desired uh, pitch position, and also. Uh, using elevator trimmer, actually using trimmer in general, uh, reduce uh, drag on airfoils. I'll explain a little bit later why. And so now let's uh, see how trimmer works. Again, uh, we will uh, discuss about it in details in uh, Principles of Flight, part of the of the our course. But uh, okay, let's repeat it. One more time, it's uh, it won't be a problem. So uh, here we see elevator in the neutral position. So now uh, we don't need to apply any forces because uh, it's, a, it's a normal position. But we want, let's say, we want to climb a little bit. So when we want to climb, we need to deflect our uh, elevator up uh, to get uh, less uh, lift force on the elevator. So in this case when we change the position of the elevator, uh, we will have constantly uh, force, aerodynamical force, uh, pushing the elevator down. So we need to uh, apply force on the yoke to keep this position. But uh, since we change the position of the trimmer, like this, in this uh, third picture, uh, we will remove forces uh, from the yoke because this trimmer uh, will create a force directed up on the elevator. Why? Because this trimmer is placed on the edge of the elevator. It's like, you know, that's like, like lever. And if we uh, apply even small force at the edge of, of some uh, lever, so we can uh, keep the position of this uh, elevator uh, with applying just small force. That means that uh, this uh, elevator become uh, balanced, so and uh, uh, we can uh, remove any forces from the yoke. I hope you understand me. The same, the same will be for for the elevator, just for nose down position. So in the first picture, we have to uh, keep force on the yoke, and the second one we don't need it because uh, this uh, elevator is trimmed. Or balance it. Rudder trimmer, it's uh, the same stuff but it's just placed on the rudder. Uh, for some uh, airplanes, small or light airplanes with uh, not powerful engines, we have just uh, just fixed trim top. It's just a piece of the metal which uh, sticks out of the uh, rudder 
and uh, it can be manually uh, adjusted to the left or to the right. Uh, so this is uh, usually uh, this trimmer is adjusted only only uh, on maintenance. So we need we don't need to uh, uh, adjust it every time. But on some airplanes, in bigger airplanes, in heavier, uh, with powerful engine, or with uh, on multi-engine airplanes, we have uh, mechanical trimmer. I mean physical trimmer, uh, which can uh, deflect deflect to the left or to the right. And uh, we control this trimmer by setting the knobs, by changing the position of the knobs in the aeroplane. And uh, in case if this uh, trimmer is mechanically controlled, we have uh, some cables which are connecting our which are connecting our trimmer knobs to trimmer on the rudder. Or in case if you have electrical system, we just have electric actuators uh, on the trimmer. And uh, so, let's uh, let's talk about uh, how we uh, when we use this trimmer. The same idea we use uh, rudder trimmer in uh, the case of changing uh, the center of gravity of the airplane, but in just in the lateral position. Uh, for example, it would uh, be useful in case if we uh, for some reason have uh, a different amount of fuel on tanks because uh, fuel is placed on the, in wings so that means that if we use uh, fuel in a different way so we have unbalanced airplane and uh, airplane will have tendency to bank to the uh, wing or to the side where we have more fuel so to compensate this effect, we can uh, retrim airplane. So it, uh, in this case, it will have uh, a stable horizontal position. Also, uh, we need uh, to use this trimmer in case if we want to change or compensate uh, propeller torque, unbalanced torque. Uh, again, uh, we will discuss uh, about it uh, in principles of flight why we have uh, uh, different torques on left or right side of the airplane and. Uh, uh, how sl slipstream of the rotating propeller would affect on the rudder. Uh, we'll discuss it later. Okay. Uh, so, okay, next. Uh, we use trimmer to compensate uh, constant side wind or crosswind, better to say. So, if you have uh, crosswind, it will push constantly to the, on the rudder, on the tail of the airplane, and airplane will tendency to slip or to uh, yaw. So in that case, if we want to keep uh, the position of the airplane on the desired direction, we could just retrim the trimmer, rudder trimmer, and that's it. Also, we use rudder trimmer to compensate yawing position of the asymmetric power um, in case if we have twin engine aircrafts. And uh, trimming of the airplane reduces uh, forces or just eliminates any forces uh, are need needed to apply on the pedals. So when we trim aircraft we don't need to push pedals, it will, they will be set on the neutral position. And uh, also again, as we said, uh, trimming the airfoil will reduce drag. That's it about control surfaces. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, next video, as I said, will be about landing gears. And uh, I would like to apologize about my uh, for my uh, English accent, I will work on it. And also, I would like to apologize for my uh, <clears throat> funny voice. I know I have, I think, a sore throat. Uh, it's it's okay. I, I promise that I will fix it too. So, uh, if you like this video, please uh, comment. Or if you dislike it video, this video, please comment too. Or leave your comments about uh, how to make this video better, if you have any idea. Now, thank you very much. See you in the next video. Bye.